please stand for the national anthem and presentation of colors. Guests, still ble please be seated. Good evening, and welcome to the 2013 Grand Rapids Community College Police Academy graduation. On behalf of the recruits and staff, I would like to thank all of you, the friends, the families, for all of your dedication, your patience, and your encouragement that you have given to these recruits over the past year. I'd also like to thank our president, our deans, our board of trustees, all of our fabulous instructors, our advisory board members, our alumni, and our UMCOL staff for sharing this evening with us. At this time, we'd like to give you just a short snapshot with a short video as to what these recruits have endured in the past year.
please join me in welcoming the president of Grand Rapids Community College, Dr. Stephen Ender. Good evening and welcome. So what is it about these 30 individuals that um, put themselves through a year like the one you've just seen? Um, I guess if I asked for a show of hands or who'd like to be in the next class, I'd probably not get a lot of takers, quite frankly. Because it takes a special person to do the work that these individuals have chosen for their life, career, and profession. I know one thing about all of them. Uh, we have 30 cadets, probably 500 people in the audience tonight. So I would wager that each one of these cadets has 10, 12, 15 people in their life that loves them dearly, that supported them through the last year, has helped them learn a bit about responsibility and character and integrity. We can't teach those things in a year. You bring those gifts to us, quite frankly. And part of that is the nurturing that you've received by the people in this room. So you're all part of this group of 30 cadets that will graduate tonight. And I always enjoy this ceremony um, tremendously from the very beginning as we watch the colors marched in. I always have this swell of pride about being an American, quite frankly. And that's just so enhanced by the 30 individuals that have chosen to protect their piece of America and to protect us. And so I know that you go out into a profession that will demand more of you than most of us can ever imagine. I have full confidence that you'll go about that work with integrity and fairness with a sense of right and wrong, a sense of responsibility for your partner, a sense to keep us safe. And there's no way that we will be able to repay you for the work that you're about to do. And the best I can do for all of us is to say, we realize what you've stepped up to, we're proud of you, and we have full faith that you won't let us down. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you. Will the squad leaders from both squads please stand up? You're looking at my go-to recruits on a daily basis. They took care of a lot. Uh, they did uniforms inspections. They gave out daily announcements, Facebook updates. And then when something didn't go right, they had to deal with me or see my name on their texts where they didn't want to answer the phone. They gave up a lot of extra time to dedicate to their squads. And I really want to thank all of you for all of that extra time. I couldn't do my job without having you guys to be able to be in between us. So thank you for that. You have gone above and beyond to assist your squads, and I hope that the experience that you received as leaders in this academy will help you be future leaders in ever, whatever department you go to. So thank you. At this time, I'd like to invite A squad leaders to come to the stage. Doug Grison, Stacy Streeter, and assistant squad leaders Donald Allen and James Green. Recruit Streeter and Recruit Grison are going to speak on behalf of their squad. On behalf of our whole squad, I want to thank you all for being here tonight. 
More importantly, I want to thank you for your love and support the past 10 months. It took a lot of hard work and commitment for us to get here today. We couldn't have done it without the love and support of our family, friends, spouses, and all other loved ones. Thank you for your continued support as we begin our careers in law enforcement. 11 months ago, we learned who our squad mates were going to be for the first time. We came into this academy as strangers. Only a few of us knew each other from being in the same prerequisite classes together here at GRCC. Director Richard and our instructors told us the first week of the academy how our squad would become our family over the next 10 months. As a squad, I would be lying if I said we didn't have our struggles and difficulties. For those of you that are here tonight that have brothers or sisters, you all know what struggles I'm talking about. Imagine having 17 of them. A few weeks into the summer semester, getting yelled at by our instructors on a daily basis, having an un unexpected PT workout in our Class A uniforms, and being assigned to write a mandatory reflection essay, we quickly learned it, we quickly learned we couldn't function as a squad if we all didn't hold each other accountable. With the help and guidance of our great instructors, we transformed into an improved and confident squad. The last few weeks were packed with exciting scenarios from simunition training and room clearing to an extremely eventful domestic. We began to put what we've learned over the past months into hands-on situations. It was bittersweet knowing our time together was coming to an end, but I couldn't have been more proud of how far we've become. We are all leaving this academy with many positive memories that will follow us in our careers. Some of these memories are the conversations we had whenever we had downtime, even if it was only for five minutes, and never knowing and being nervous where Green was going to take the conversation. <laughs> uh, another memory we all hold was doing a hot yoga session with the director. Cox, you know where I am going with this one. <laughs> never mind. I think I will skip this one. You can ask your loved ones to fill you in. During the academy, we were all taught there is a right place and time to show your emotions in this job. An emotional memory we are, we are taking with us um, is when the recruits from both A and B squad attended one of our instructors, Officer Peter's dad's funeral. Um, we, all, we all attended this funeral to support Officer Peters, our instructor, who we have grown to love to support him and his family. Um, that experience, I believe, brought both squads together and showing that in this job, we are definitely a family and we are all brothers and sisters. Another emotional memory we are taking with us was the traditional Officer Kazimierski run that we ran at the end of the academy. This is an eight mile run when we leave from here, the Ford Field House, and we run to Officer Kazimierski's grave site which is four miles there and then four miles back. I know that 40 degree morning, as we approach the gravesite, I truly believe that Officer Kosmiski could hear the soft faint of our footsteps as we were entering the grave, the grave site. I want to dedicate Session 80A Squad to a proud father I know is with us tonight in spirit and looking down on his son with a huge smile on his face. We, we wore these bracelets all year round in order to honor and remember Sergeant Scott Tatro of Algon County. Taters, we all love you and we look forward to seeing you continue in your father's footsteps. And so, for the last time, A Squad, hang tight real quick. We have one last announcement for you. We want to congratulate all of you on your accomplishments the past 10 months. 10 months. You put in a lot of hard work, made sacrifices, and deserve to be here tonight. We would like to thank you for the memories and may the close friendships you've made last for many years to come. Tonight ends the first chapter in your career, and we wish you the best of luck as the next chapter begins. So Session 80A Squad, a job well done. Stay safe out there. At this time, we would like to say a special thank you to Director Richard 
for um, over a year ago now for meeting us for the first time in our interviews to get into the academy here and believing in us that you know we would be able to be great police officers someday and giving us the opportunity to be here. Uh, we all chipped in some money and with some extra help and effort from Grayson, we were able to purchase um, car covers for the vehicles that GRCC Police Academy purchased. And now Jim Green is going to announce our Instructor of the Year. Good evening. I just want to thank you all for coming tonight. I would like to start off by saying, I would like to start off by thanking all of our instructors for their hard work, their time, and their effort. They spent many hours teaching us to be the best we can be. You have all made a special place in our hearts and made a difference in our lives. I wish I could give every one of you our instructor award, but we had to choose one. This person was very knowledgeable, diligent, and patient with us as they taught us one of the most important courses during the academy. They spent individual time with us, one-on-one -on -one to fix our mistakes, and they were always there to help us with a smile on their face. Yes, Deputy Matthews, you have truly impacted us in so many ways. Please come forward and receive a gift on behalf of, behalf of A Squad Session 80. Now you see why they're leaders, right? Will B Squad leaders please join me? Felix Rodriguez Torres, Trenton Bailey, Ray Erickson, and Assistant Squad leaders Taryn Adams and Lucas Wiersma. On behalf of B Squad, Ray Erickson and Lucas Wiersma will be doing the presentation. Good evening. On behalf of B-Squad, I would like to thank my wife, all of the other wives and husbands, grandparents, mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, children, and all of you who came in support of us tonight. We, would all, we, could, have not, we could not have done any of this without your love and support. Uh, we as B-Squad would also like to thank GRCC faculty and staff, Ms. Anna Rapay, Mr. Dave Durrell, the ATFE, Kent County Sheriff, Wyoming, Grand Rapids, East Grand Rapids, Walker, Kentwood, Granville, South Haven, and the GRCC Police Departments for providing such fine instruction. Thank you all very much. All of the instruction we received here at the GRCC Police Academy was truly top notch. From the classroom, to the range, to the driving course. What made this instruction so successful was that all of our instructors, at one point or another, were active duty police officers. They were able to draw from their real world experiences to give us the closest thing to a quote, real world environment. This gave us the best opportunity to apply the curriculum set forth by M. Coles. Every instructor provided, excuse me, every instructor proved they were dedicated to molding us to be tactically, emotionally, and intellectually sound police officers, and that common sense will allow us to have a long and healthy career. And for that, we thank you. A common theme for B-Squad throughout our training was honorably shared and can be summed up in one phrase, do what you have to do. This philosophy really became the core element of our training. We would like to especially recognize Officer Robert Bo Peters, GRCC Police Department, uh, for his efforts in sculpting our collective warrior mindset in preparation for this tough career. Thank you, sir. Training didn't end with the recruits. We were fortunate enough to attend a seminar on emotional survival for law enforcement put on by a company called To the Rescue LLC. Personally, I was honored to have my wife with me during this training. It was training on how to address the nuances of this career and the lifestyle. Uh, so I'd like to make a personal thank you to uh, Mr. Terry Cujo-Bikirk, 
Mr. and Michael Stumpy Waringa for all of their help, special, especially from my wife and myself. B Squad is, has a personality all its own. Most of us are changing careers, and we are a no-nonsense group. We learn through tabletop discussions that it is not okay to throw your sidearm so that the bad guy, bad guy can't get it. With our sharpened observation skills, we discovered that those really aren't UFOs on the new Detroit cruisers. You will not get a free meal by accidentally eating your napkin while on a meal break between classes with your B-Squad friends. And probably most importantly, thanks to Ms. Sweet Brown, ain't nobody got time for that. All of us had a different experience over the past 11 months. But one thing I know that we have is a new family. The level of camaraderie and brotherhood this group has developed makes me honored to stand before all of you to represent it. I wish all of you the best of luck as we embark on our career, and I look forward to serving our community alongside all of you. And briefly to close, I would like to offer one final bit of advice to keep you safe on the streets. As the inspirational instructor Diamond Dave has so eloquently stated, don't go ninja, those that don't need ninja. <laughs> and with that, I'd like to introduce uh, recruit Luke Wiersma. He's going to present uh, our instructor of the year. I don't know how I top that. <laughs> I don't know how I do it. Well, everyone, thank you again for coming. Um, I've been given the honor of presenting the Session 80 B Squad Instructor of the Year Award this year. Um, as A Squad did, it's, it's tradition. Uh, for both squads to select one instructor that stood out to each squad as being a both prime example of being a law enforcement officer, but also one that clicked with the squad the most. This was a hard decision for B squad because each and every instructor we had was phenomenal. They all made a real connection with our squad, however there was one that stood out among them. And this was a very unanimous decision between all 12 of us. This instructor from the first day we had him made a real connection with each of us individually and as a squad as a whole. From getting us thinking critically in discussions at the start of every class, having a member of his department walk us through a homicide investigation play by play and coaxing us along to make our own decisions, taking us to his department and getting us a little, little time in the simulator room doing a little yelling and a little shooting, to making a very potentially mundane report writing class, one of the most hands-on um, scenario training classes we had. This instructor was the epitome of integrity throughout the academy, and I know I can speak for all 12 of us when I say he was the best instructor we have ever had, especially since this was his first time ever teaching in a formal academy setting. So, without belaboring this any longer, <laughs> uh, squad, B Squad chose Lieutenant McGuffey from Wyoming Police Department. Lieutenant, would you please come over here? Also, it's tradition, just as A-Squad did, to present a gift to the Academy. Your career chart. We'd like to present you this plaque. Uh, as Erickson mentioned earlier, it says, do what you have to do. Uh, the lecture that Officer Peters gave us that day on the do what you have to do quote, it was one of the most moving things any one of us has ever heard. Um, and we all pretty much left in tears. Um, it was an amazing quote. And as Erickson said, it became kind of our motto for the whole year. So we'd like to thank you, Officer Peters, and I'd like to present that to the Academy. Thank you. Thank you. Time, I would ask that our, um, off, our instructors come forward for the awards. Um, Special Agent Luke Key, would you be willing to do the firearms? Sergeant Morningstar and Officer Peters. First of all, A-Squad, I want to say those are some awesome gifts you guys got, the director. 
Every year, I have the pleasure of teaching emergency vehicle operations with the recruits, and we get to teach them um, with myself, Sergeant Kyle Griffith, Officer Robin Maley, and Officer Chad Hargrave. We teach them as much as we can in that weekend, but we also try to enforce that this is just the first step. Hopefully, the recruits learned a lot through the hands-on training, but also hopefully they had fun, because I think it is one of the first times they actually get out and get to be outside for a full weekend. But each year we try to get together and we choose a recruit from A squad and from B squad for the top driver. We don't just look at their performance and their skill, but we also look at their attitude, their teamwork without the, throughout the squad, their organization, and their leadership. And this year we chose for A squad, Stacy Streeter. And then while she's walking up here for B Squad, Raymond Erickson. And I'd just like to thank all the recruits for all your hard work that weekend. I know we all appreciated it. I want to wish you guys good luck and then remember to be careful. And we want you to be able to come home safe at night and therefore remember your 80%. At the GRCC firearms program, we have four firearms instructor. The lead firearms instructor is Sergeant Mark Reminga from the Kent County Sheriff's Department. He called me today um, and asked me to fill in for him because he is sick, so that's why he is not here. He wanted me to give uh, his best regards to the recruit class. Um, two other instructors on the firearms program are here today, Officer Colbert from Kentwood PD and Officer Wilshire, also from the Kentwood PD. Uh, the four of us take our firearms training that we offer the recruits, your loved ones, family ones, uh, very serious and I think that they'll attest to uh, the seriousness of the uh, training program. Um, you kind of missed out on Sergeant Reminga's speech. They're uh, much better than, than mine. He's, uh, he's actually the funny firearms instructor. Um, I'm not so funny, I'm much more serious, but that's okay. Uh, yeah, we'll let you out early after that. Um, for those of you that weren't in the firearms program, you got a, a, a good chance to see on the video what it's about. Um, for the A squad who had to suffer through that, uh, those conditions, you saw the, the piles of snow, the ice on the ground, um, but when it came time to training, the gloves come off, the coat can stay on if they can still get to their equipment, and then if they can't get to their equipment, then the coat goes off for 45 minutes. And then we're nice enough to let them warm up and come back out and, uh, and shoot some more. Um, I know they enjoyed the dry firing exercises that we did. Um, but at the end of the day, which is today, the end of the day for the recruit class, I think you'll all appreciate that the skills that you learned from the four of us firearms instructors are what's going to make a difference, maybe, someday in your life of going home or not going home. And that's an awesome responsibility that we do not take lightly, and that's why we run the program the way we do because I can't look at any of your family members knowing, or, and my colleagues, I speak for them as well, knowing that we failed you and somehow and let you kind of get by and kind of do a good job. Um, one thing you should know about the, uh, the firearms program as well as the recruits is some recruits come to this training program with no experience. Some are combat veterans in the military. Um, so we have wide ranging, but they're all treated the same from ground level up and uh, you know, they all have to adapt and, and do well, and, and they all pass the uh, state standards for pistol, rifle, and shotgun. Um, we give out a, a shooting award, a top gun award for each squad, if you will. Um, we don't pick and choose. They pick and choose. On the one day that they have to rise and shoot really well is the day who, uh, who gets the award. Um, so for A squad, it was Recruit Shamir.
and for B-Squad Recruit Torres. In closing, what I want to say to the recruit class is we, how the, the way we ended the last range day with you was remember the training you have and don't stop training. Even if you have to attend it or pay for it on your own, do not let this be the last formal training that you receive. Continue your skills. We have a lot invested in you. Thank you. Good evening. I'm very fortunate to have the opportunity to teach both A squad and B squad in the area of physical fitness training and subject control training. Um, I really enjoy it because it's not a classroom setting. I get to bring them into this facility or into that wrestling room and test them physically and push them physically and then push them farther physically to the point where they may remember the first day of PT where we had four trash cans in this gymnasium and they were all being occupied at one time. So I consider it fortunate, I don't know if they do. I'm gonna do uh, things a little differently. With my opportunity to teach, I also get the opportunity to present some awards. I'm gonna ask Recruit Schmier and Recruit Adams to step forward, please, and join me. Both of these recruits are receiving the award for most improved in the area of physical fitness. And we'll start with Recruit Adams first. Uh, Recruit Adams came into the academy at a high level of physical fitness. So did the remainder of her squad. I was truly challenged by the members of her squad in regards to teaching them the physical fitness class. Every day I would come in with an exercise program written out and I often got to the end of the program of each day and the squad would be looking at me for more exercises. I had to get creative and push them beyond their comfort zone. And because of that, I was not clear on who to give this award to. That was until I looked at the scores. And I compared the scores that when the recruits started in January to their scores when they finished PT at the end of April. And at that point, it became very clear to me that Recruit Adams made the most progress. Some of those areas include there's a four event test, a vertical jump how many push-ups you can do in one minute, how many sit-ups you can do in one minute, and a half-mile shuttle run. Recruit Adams added 12 sit-ups in one minute. She more than doubled the number of push-ups she could do in a minute. She reduced her run time by over 30 seconds. Some very impressive numbers. And so that is why I've selected her to receive the 2013 B-Squad Most Improved in the Area of Physical Fitness. Congratulations. <laughs> Recruit Schmier, uh, when we did the diagnostic test, uh, some of the recruits in his squad weren't up to where they need to be uh, at their physical fitness level. So the procedure is I would put them on a personal improvement plan. And what that requires is them to meet with me at the end of every class period. I give them further instructions on what they are to do uh, between class periods until the next time we meet. And it, that varies depending on where they're deficient. And so at the end of one of the class periods at the very beginning of the semester, I met with the, uh, the recruits that were on the personal improvement plan. And as I met with them, I noticed that Recruit Smear was standing you know, just behind them. So of course I inquired as to why he was there since he was not one of the students on the personal improvement plan. He asked if it was okay if he listened in because he felt that his diagnostic scores were not where he wanted them to be. So I have absolutely no objection to it. So then each and every class period, at the end of the class period, as I met with the students that were on the plans, Recruit Smear was standing there beside him. And it's clear that he did the work, he did what he had to do in the class and outside of the class. Because when it came down to 
comparing his physical fitness results in January as opposed to April, some of the improvements he made was he added one and a half inches to his vertical jump. He took 30 seconds off of half, his half mile shuttle run time. He added 15 sit-ups in one minute and added 21 push-ups in a minute. And I'll add this, he never, in, during the class period, never sought attention from anybody else. He is one of the students that would just fly under the radar and nobody would notice if you didn't look at those results. So because of his incredible work ethic and the results that he received, that's why I selected him as the 2013 A-Squad Most Improved in the Area PT. Go this way. Now if I could have recruits Allberg and Grison step forward, please. These recruits will be receiving the Charles Wells Award. The Charles Wells Award is the Excellence in Physical Fitness Training Award. Uh, it is not always given to the person that has the best numbers, per se, in the area of physical fitness, but the person that encompasses all the areas that I look for and someone standing out in the area of physical fitness. Someone that's in shape, that works hard, encourages the rest of their squad. And when recruit Grison came into the academy, he also was at a very high level of physical fitness. The reality is that the level of fitness he was at was high enough to pass the exit standards in April already in January. He could have coasted through the semester and not worked very hard and still passed the minimum standards, but he chose to work hard every single day. I know that I saw in him pushing himself and pushing himself, but I also know that I saw the squad respond to what they saw in him. They acknowledged and knew his physical fitness level, but they also saw how hard he worked. And that weighed into their abilities and their effort. And for that reason, that I have selected him as the A-Squad Charles Wells Award um, recipient for excellence in PT. Recruit Allberg, like Recruit Grayson, came in uh, to the academy in very good physical fitness shape. Um, he also worked very hard in every single class period. It was clear that he understood the benefits of hard work. The one thing, the one item that really stands out in regards to Recruit Allberg was how the level of respect the other squad mates showed him. He was relatively quiet. He would constantly give quiet words of encouragement to his squad mates. And they respected him and appreciated the effort he gave. And I think they appreciated and respected him so much because he gave them that much respect to, to begin with. He was one of the students that just demonstrated, if you come in, keep your mouth quiet, you work hard, you'll attain those goals. And so, for all those reasons, that's why I've selected him as B-Squad's 2013 Charles Wells Award in Excellence in Physical Fitness. <laughs> if I could have Recruit Erickson step forward, please. On July 8, 2007, Officer Robert Kosminski of the Grand Rapids Police Department was shot and killed in line of duty while responding to a domestic assault. Officer Kosminski graduated from the GRCC Police Academy in 1999. A few short months later, he began his career with the Grand Rapids Police Department. Soon after his death, staff here at GRCC Police Academy knew that we needed to do something to honor Officer Kosminski. So, with the help of the GRCC Foundation Office, we approached the Kosminski family 
with the idea of establishing the Officer Robert Kosminski Memorial Scholarship. We also asked the Kosminski family if they had any desire to take part in the selection process. First, they loved the idea, and secondly, they jumped at the opportunity to take part. So we established the guidelines in which we would use to select the recipient each year. And each year, these students write a, pap a paper, an essay, and then the academy staff reviews those essays as well as taking into consideration the recruits' performance in the academy at that point. We then narrow the selection process down to three to five recruits. We hand that information over to the Kosminski family, and they ultimately choose the scholarship recipient. And so at this time, I'm going to acknowledge that recruit Erickson was the 2013 Officer Robert Kosminski Memorial Scholarship recipient. And in my closing, I would just like to thank the recruits for taking advantage of the opportunity that you've been given here. We talked about what you're entitled to, but we also talked about opportunities. I personally thank you for me and my family for you taking the opportunity to help my family walk through a loss. So thank you. At this time, I'd like to introduce Director David Harvey from the Michigan Commission on Law Enforcement Standards to present the Outstanding Performance Awards. Thank you, Director, and thank you, GRCC, for another Outstanding Academy. Recruits, I've got uh, just a bit of a confession to make that OC spray thing. We don't require that. <laughs> we just like to watch the fluid come out of your face. Uh, actually, that's not true. We do require it, but we do like to watch the fluid come out of your face. As I said, MCO sets the minimum standards. GRCC certainly exceeds those standards, and they're a fine academy. We graduate over 400 recruits each year out of the police academies throughout the state of Michigan. It is not easy to complete these academies. It's a testament to your hard work and your abilities and to your instructors and the academy as a whole that you're here today. So on behalf of the Michigan Commission on Law Enforcement Standards, we congratulate each and every recruit for your accomplishments today. It's my job, however, to give out uh, two awards, actually one award to two different recipients. Uh, the award is called the Outstanding Performance Award from M. Coles. We like to single out one individual uh, from the academy or from, in this case, the squads of that person that exudes leadership and outstanding performance in all areas of the academy. And the nice thing about this award is it's not only selected by staff, but it's also a combination of staff and your fellow recruits. So it's my honor to give for first Squad A the Outstanding Performance Award to recruit Douglas Grison. For Squad B, it's my pleasure to award recruit Raymond Erickson. Congratulations to all of you, and please be safe out there. move into our coin ceremony. In 2009, the police academy joined in a tradition that dates back to World War I with the issuance of a challenge coin. From its military beginnings, the challenge coin had a special affiliation with a select group of individuals and has been widely adopted by police, fire, and EMS agencies across um, the world after the terrorist attacks of 9-11. 
Once this coin is earned, the member can be challenged by a fellow coin holder to produce the coin or pay the consequences. The coin is earned and never just given. It is a reward given for the blood, the sweat, and the tears that was endured by the class of 2013 and to those alumni that came before you. Session 80 has been an amazing year. We did become a family, and you can see from, from the recruits' speeches that we all talk about family. We had our challenges. We all started out the academy with a challenge of 26 acts of kindness in 26 weeks. It was amazing to see what they came up with. Each squad had to report their act on the classroom board every week. They came up with amazing ways to give back to our communities. They gave 26 cups of coffee, which I got to witness someone who thought they were on candid camera, free bus tickets, handwritten cards to the DeVos Children's Hospital, food drives, and for being role models to our first boot campers this summer. We encountered weddings together, births, a divorce, and funerals of fellow instructors' parents and fellow officers and families that are officers. The recruits learned real quickly that we were a family experiencing real life issues and what it means to be in the brotherhood of law enforcement. Recruits. I hope that this coin serves as an everyday reminder that you are part of something bigger than yourself. I hope that as you carry it in your pocket, you will remember where you came from and the bonds that were formed as you earned it. It is my challenge to you to carry this coin with honor during your career and to always honor yourself your fellow recruits, the GRCC Police Academy, and to the law enforcement profession. It is my privilege to be able to issue you a GRCC Police Academy Challenge Coin and to welcome you to the Thin Blue Line. I would ask at this time that Professor Banks come to the stage and help me with these presentation of coins. Taryn Adams. Donald Allen. Trenton Bailey. Adam Bolf. Benjamin Bose. William Burnett. Kevin Klinger. Samuel Cox. Jeron Daniels. Raymond Erickson. Jeffrey Fells, James Green, Doug Grison, Kyle Hart,
Kyle Jinks. Crystal King. Kyle Macklin. Kyle Marshall. Jacqueline Martinez. Antonio Perez. Matthew Piper. Jordan Price. Scott Reenstra. Felix Rodriguez Torres. Thomas Schmier. Stacy Streeter. Dakota Tetro. Justin Alberg. Lucas Wiersma. Jerry Wineland. be seated. It's always wonderful when we, go ahead and be seated. It's always wonderful when we um, have recruits that get hired from departments before they even graduate. Um, and this year we have several who are in the process who didn't even have time to get their uniforms because they were just offered jobs as early as, or as late as today. Um, but I would like to congratulate those recruits who have been given conditional offers, and there are more to come that we just can't quite say it yet. But Recruit Streeter and Recruit Allen were hired by Grand Rapids Police Department. <laughs> Recruit Bailey was hired by Shiawassee County. Recruit Wineland, Cedar Springs Police Department. And Jacqueline Martinez, Zeeland Police Department. We also have the distinct honor to be able to pin one of our graduates tonight. I would like to introduce you to Chief Jeffrey Hawk from the Grand Haven Department of Public Safety and our new public safety officer, Matthew Piper. Congratulations. This concludes our ceremony for tonight. I want to thank all of you for coming out and for sharing this amazing night with us. Officer Peters will dismiss the squad. Thank you.